Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, all my witches and warlocks. Hi, it's me, Sarah James from Jesse James Beads, and we are on day two of the Trick or Treat Jewelry Making Event with Jesse James Beads and Softlex Company. Hello, everyone out there, and please give a warm welcome. Hello to the main witch of the hour, Gem Hawks. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and so on and so forth. I brought my broom. There we go. I'm going to drop it now on the floor so I don't end up falling over it. How are you all? I hope that you are doing very, very well today. What have you been up to? Tell us what you're at. I'm so excited to be here. Beautiful, beautiful product. Jem, we are so happy that you could fly in on your broom all the way from the United Kingdom to grace us with your magical presence and be teaching us this wonderful, wonderful wire working project to kick off day two of our Halloween jewelry making event. It is always a treat to work with you, Jem. I love hanging out with you. I love designing <laughs> projects with you. I love having you work around for our events. And this is the first SoftFlex event that Jem is taking part of. So that was, let us please give Jem the warmest welcome. And Jem, just tell us a little bit about you. Where are you coming from? What are you up to? What's going on in Jem's world today? Jem's world, Jem's world. Okay, there's it. a song it's in there awesome. somewhere, I reckon. <laughs> 1980s babies will remember that. <laughs> I am cracking today, thank you, my love. I'm so excited as ever to be with my beautiful friend, Sarah. And it's a new time for me coming over and, and working with some gorgeous Softflex products as well. We have got a real, real treat. You guys have already been through day one. I'm so stoked to be here for day two. Today has actually been really gloriously sunny. It's a little bit cold, you know, but there you go. We're in October. What do I expect? This is true. Yes, it's the same for us here. We're our experience. It's beautifully sunny today and the colors are just popping. Like it feels like a true fall day today. Definitely. Yeah. We took the dogs out um, just after lunch today and the sunshine was glorious. The water was glinting. We went past the reservoir. Everything was perfect. And I even was warm enough to take off my big fleecy coat by the time we got home. So, you know, it's a winner. Yes. Fleecy coat off, witchy gear on. Can you just model for us your incredible outfit? Because I really feel it goes so well with the project <laughs> that I'm going to be teaching us today. Come on, up, up. Let's see it. Okay. So full disclosure, I bought this about five years ago and I was about 20 pounds heavier. Pre so it's held together with a spare belt, but we have the full witchy skirt. Ooh. We have the hat and you've already seen the broom and I've just knocked that on the floor. So <laughs> Merry meet my friends. Happy <laughs> early witching time. Woman. <laughs> I love it. We were all talking yesterday at the Zoom after party for our trick or treat jewelry making event about how we love, you know, dressing up either in costume, either vicariously through other people's costumes or through a piece of costume jewelry, or maybe we put our dog in a hot dog outfit. <laughs> and you are out there, but Jim, so tell us how, what is, what are your thoughts on Halloween and dressing up? Like to me, you are a very like vivacious, bold woman. I see you've got that hat on. Tell us a little bit about, um, what Halloween means for you? Um, without getting too deep and spiritual, Halloween mm -hmm. or Samhain, as I celebrate it, is a time when we are able to feel more close to our ancestors. So, yeah, it's a, a heck of a lot of fun, but it also takes me back through the generations. And I'm happy to kind of feel close to my family, which is lovely. I mean, for me, it's a matriarchal line that goes back and I'm kind of feeling them close by at that time of year. So we're working towards Halloween. I love dressing up. Uh, I, I do some acting work. I do some voiceover work, all kinds of different bits and bobs. So I love Seven this weeks. is brilliant. I love my job a little bit too much on days like this. And of course, it's a great time to be super expressive with your jewellery making. So you can do things that maybe at the other times in the year you might feel a little bit, well, that's a little bit showy. Come Halloween. Oh, my gosh. If you want a bat the size of your body, make a bat the size of your body. Express yourself. Have fun. You know, it is party time. I love that. That sums it up so perfectly, you know, with tapping into our ancestors, with, you know, the matriarchal line, like Jem was just speaking of, Day of the Dead in Hispanic culture. 
and also just the ability to adorn and maybe go just mm -hmm. a little bit bigger around this time of year. I love Absolutely. It. Love go for those colors that you wouldn't normally wear. So I, I have no clothing that is orange. But come Halloween, do you know what? I'm going to put a pumpkin outfit on, you know, it's I probably won't because I don't have one. But you know what I'm saying? It gives you an opportunity to explore a part of you that you don't normally explore. Oh, Be somebody else for a bit. Why not? It's good fun. Oh, my gosh. I love it. And Jem, I love the project that you have cooked up for us for today because it is very um, the projects that we are creating today for everyone who's chiming in right now. We have the Jesse James Beads bead and supply kit and the soft flex wire wire and findings kit put them together and you've got the four projects or the four classes that surmise the trick-or-treat jewelry making party with jesse james and softlex yesterday was more like candy corn candy trick-or-treating like a little bit more lighter projects <laughs> all halloween based today is very witchy and i might say the projects are witching themselves <laughs> I see what you did there and I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this is, you're just inspiring me. <laughs> it's definitely a day to be quite daring. The mm -hmm. colors that I received in my design elements kit, which is called Eternal Love, which I adore incidentally, absolutely fabulous. Black and red with some metallics in there. That is hot. It's sensual. It's beautiful. And it's, yes. I just love the whole feel of it. It's fantastic. So, Jem, do you want to, or could you please share with us what it is that we're going to be making today? I'm so excited for everyone to see. So I have got a couple of inspiration projects for you to see, but we may not make them. But okay. I also have two projects that we are definitively going to make. The it. first one is a really, really, I think, beautiful pair of earrings. If you've not worked with wire before, don't fret. It's something that if you've got some tools to work with you'll need cutters you'll need maybe some round nose pliers and you'll need some chain nose pliers or flat pliers and with those simple tools maybe grab a round form i've got a jesse james bead pot that i'm going to use later on we're going to create together a pair of earrings that to me are they're in keeping with Halloween, but they're also a technique that you can move and shake around, put with different materials throughout the year, and it becomes very, very wearable. So it's a project that I think, yeah, fantastic for Halloween with these colours, but you can take it, you can do other things with it, and it will help you to get more comfortable with wire. And then I've got a big showy, a big showy. Do you want a quick flick of the big I, showy? I would love to, yes, please. So this is the second project that we're going to make. It's a wire lily. Let me just get that a little bit closer to camera. So I've set this as a pendant. So it would hang like so. And you could wear that as a pendant if you chose to. But Sarah and I were just saying that wouldn't it be beautiful in your hair as a hat pin, something like that? It's such a beautiful form to work with. I love working with nature inspired pieces. So a floral design, we're going to work with this again. And I'll show you the earrings when we're ready to make them. They're going to be a bit of a surprise. I've also got another couple of supplementary pieces for you, which are really just there for inspiration, things that you can do with products that you've received in your kit. If you like the idea, they're really quite simple to, to get into. So did you want me to take you down to the board and have a look at those in slightly closer? I'm ready. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay, I'm just going to go to the settings and put you down to the hand cam. There we go. So let's just make sure that the camera is indeed working. It's all been cleaned ready for the show. So these are where we are going to start off today. I've got a whole plethora of things on my board because I want you to see what we're going to be working with. Our primary component with Softflex is this outstanding black craft wire in 22 gauge. Now, 22 gauge is that perfect gamut point between a structural wire and a weaving wire. It's right in the middle. And it means that you can do things that are a little bit difficult to do with a structural wire and don't work quite so well with a very fine weaving wire. So it's the perfect wire to be making for trick or treat. Let's get that one out of the way. And we're going to use that wire throughout the two main pieces. 
there's a sneaky peek of a little pair of earrings that I will show you later so you can have a gander and see if you fancy doing those. Now, my design elements kit, which is eternal love, contains all of these beautiful items. Really, really gorgeous. I happen to have a great fondness for this piece particularly. My very favourite vocal artist, Mr Joey Tempest of the rock band Europe, had something similar to this way back in 1986. So I've got a real fondness for this design. But we're going to be working with a couple of pieces from this kit. I'm just going to choose one of them because we don't obviously want to make it twice over. So we're going to be working with one of these huge, it's almost like a dahlia. They're really, really beautiful. One of those is going to be for today. And we're also going to be working with one of the silver antiqued bead caps. So if you're making along today, obviously, if you don't want to make along, you want to watch and then make a little bit later, you can obviously rewind me and make me quiet, which obviously I wish uh, some people think they would like to do in real life, but you never know. I'm also going to be never. using one of these. <laughs> That's all right, Sarah. You have the mute button, so you're actually in full control of whether or not I do be quiet. <laughs> so those are the three main components from the design elements selection that we're going to work with. So I'm just going to pop that out of the way for now. Another sneaky peek for later. Very, very simple. If you have enough of your beautiful check glass beads left over, I'm only utilizing just a very, very tiny handful as key components. But if you do have some leftovers, there's a design idea for you, which I will show you later. Let's pop that one out of the way as well. Clear the board down slightly and we'll get onto this slightly more elaborate wire flower in a little bit, a little bit of time. So if I take these off the angel wing dish, you can see a little bit more about how they're formed. Obviously, because I want it to be neat and tidy, that ear wire is just going to go literally everywhere. So this is what we're looking towards making. Go on, could you hook up there? That would be amazing. So helpful. Super. So we're working with our gorgeous soft flex wire in black, the 22 gauge reel from your pack. And you should have got a wire tamer on there. So I'm going to unspool far much more than I need. I'm going to unspool about 15 inches. Now, there's a plentiful amount on your reel, so don't fret. You can always find uses for the scraps a little bit later on. So what I'm going to do is just move things up to the top of the board. Three key components from our Design Elements Eternal Love Kit. And I'm just going to smooth that through just once. And you'll find that this, because it is coated in black, operates very differently to your kind of copper with silver plating on. It will react differently to a raw copper. It's got a little bit more substance to it, which is why it's gorgeous to work through on a design like this. So I'm going to start at the, what I'm going to call the short end. Because I've unspooled about 15 inches, I'm much closer to this end. And we'll start probably about four inches from one end and make a, an angle in that wire. So once you've made that angle, we're going to take the short tail and make the tiniest little lemon shape down at the bottom. Now, you can see that what I'm doing is I'm just stroking the wire gently to coerce it. So I've come out at a nice smooth arc and it's slightly longer to the end point. Now, the end point, when we finish the design, should be kind of in line with this straight bit. So let's just draw the wire back and you'll see what I'm going on and on about. So it looks like a, I don't know, a foot or a slipper or something at the moment. I'm just going to straighten up that section just past the bend that we made. And I'm going now to use my nail. You could use your thumb. If you really struggle, you could use a set of bail making pliers just to bring the wire back across and it's crossing over the top of that very first angle that we made. So I'm looking for this to give you the feeling of a flower petal or a leaf or something inspired by nature. So once you've got the shape that you desire and what you can do is just ever so slightly put a tiny little pinch down at the bottom. Now you'll see with the pliers, I put them inside the tip of the wire and just move those ever so gently inwards like so, rather than squishing them both together from the outside. That's kind of important because we need to have a bit of space down at the bottom. Now, when I teach techniques that involve this shape, I tend to refer to it as a funky little lemon. Now, 
that's probably really deeply annoying, but that's how I think of it. It's kind of like a lemon shape. So you shape, but you've got a bit of an edge to it on one end. So I'm going to very, very softly hold across the center of that lemon shape and I'm not squishing the wire where that short tail crosses over the angle, the first angle that we made. What I'm going to do now is to take this short tail of wire and wrap it around just here. So let me just push that around one time and pull it nice and firmly tight and then take that through a second time. And what I'm looking for is for the wire to coil around this core. This is our core wire and this is our decorative end. So once you've got that shape and you're happy with it, you can, if you want to, very, very gently open and close on that lemon shape. Or if you have tools that have been treated with a dip that coats them, or if you have nylon jaw pliers, you may prefer to use them. I'm just going to use my nails to scooch that tiny coil of two wires that go around the core. And what I'm going to do then is just warm through one time on the short tail of wire. If I just very softly hold the point at which the wire is coming away from the core and draw it back across that lemon shape, you get this glorious little artful weave, almost like a wave. So I've done that once and then I've pinched again very softly twice and I now want the tail of the wire to operate uh, directly across that little end of the lemon that we made. So if I hold that slightly closer, it will go blurry, but you'll see what I'm doing. I now need to trim away the very end of the wire. So the more you make this design, the less wire you're likely to waste. So we used four inches. We could definitely have got away with just using three inches for a tiny little design like this. I'm going to now invert this. I'm flipping it upside down. If you can hear my dog Mojo in the background, he's probably seen a cat on the telly. So uh, sorry about that. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is take that little tail, that tiny sticky outy bit, and I'm going to put my pliers onto it just as it goes past the end of that lemon shape. And I'm going to support the lemon shape and pull the wire up at an angle. So we're looking at the underside of the design. And if I flip that sideways, you'll see that I've made a soft right angle. So we've made a soft right angle and what I'm going to do now is draw that very end, that short little bit, back around the end and try to get it to line up with the underside of that glorious wave that we made. So you can do this with your fingers. And what I'm doing is very, very slowly moving it because I want it to sit as centrally as possible. If it goes to one side, meh, it's not the end of the world, don't fret. And I'm just going to clamp that down. I'm using my thumb and finger because it's slightly easier for you to see. I'm just pushing and pushing until the very end, the cut bit, meets the underside of that wave shape that we made. So if I invert this again so that it is proper side up again, you'll see that we've made a petal or a leaf, some kind of thing from nature. What I'm going to do now is just undo, not undo, but release a little bit more of the long tail of wire. Now, I'm not entirely sure how long I want the drop to be. So I'm going to probably take this to about seven inches just trim away the end piece and you'll see that obviously we needed far less than 15 inches but I've got a very usable piece of wire here which in all honesty is probably long enough to make a second one. What I want to do now is to add three of those check beads from the tube which I temporarily misplaced which is classic me. If we haven't met before by the way, hi I'm Jem, I'm from England, I was born in Stratford-upon-Avon, the birthplace of Shakespeare and I live just about 22 miles away from there now. So what I'm going to do is we've got the nice long tail and on one end we've got that floral inspired piece. I'm just going to drop that down so I can show you what I'm doing next, which is literally just putting three of those glossy, gorgeous black check beads onto the end. And if we allow that to sit down, I think that looks beautiful. They're a perfect match for the wire. So the next thing that we're going to do is have a look at our, I want to say it's another lily-like design, but I couldn't actually be certain. So I'm going to first thread on to the concave side of that bead cap and just allow that to go all the way down against those beautiful glossy beads. 
And then I'm going to take the whole thing through the red lily. So you can see already that we've made quite a pretty design. And if you wanted to finish off here and just have them as dangling earrings so they would look like this, you'd miss out on the beauty of the metallic section. But it's a really gorgeous design anyway. It looks almost oriental because of the red and the black and the way that the leaves swoosh down from this angle. But what I want to do is to drag that so it sits forwards. So what I'm looking to do is find the gap between any two petals and I'm just going to align the bead cap now. So you can see that the bead cap does have large holes. If I just orient that to the light, you'll see the light is dancing over it. It does have large holes. So I'm going to warm the wire slightly and draw it up. It's come through the hole at the back of that red flower and I want it to go through a gap in between those two topmost leaves and then forwards through one of those. This is what generally happens, is it all lifts away, but it's a good way to show you what's happening. So we're making a loop. I will just draw that back into position. And between two of the red petals, I'm just going to draw the wire all the way through as far as it can go in this direction. And to make it easier to see, I'm just going to bring that down slightly. So I'm putting a bit of a kink in the wire as it passes through the bead cap and the beautiful lucite flower. The wire comes through the back and then I'm taking it between the top two petals and threading it forwards. And I'm doing this slowly and gently to protect my wire. And when we get to the end, what will happen is we will hold everything in place just with a little bit of bent wire. So we're going to push that all the way through and forwards, making sure that you have a little bit of tension, keeping that section of beads and that flower shape that we made. If it twists round, you can do that once. I got away with it. Look, shh, don't tell anyone. And I'm going to pull all the way through and then pull sharply up as soon as I see that the wire is taut at the back. That is the most complicated essence of the design. So we're going to show you how to finish off the earring now. And I'm going to use from my beautiful Eternal Love Kit, one of the faceted. Now, I can't actually tell if it's slightly drop shape. I think it probably is. So if you want to have the slightly shorter side going down, it's probably best to make it the same on both sides. But if you can't see a difference, then don't even worry about it. So what we have here is locked in position. We've locked the wire by just giving that one small bend backwards and upwards. If I put that down, despite the fact that we haven't tied off that bead yet, it's all quite stable. Everything is working for me right now. So I'm going to add another three beads. This makes quite a long earring drop. You don't have to have any more of these if you don't want to. If you don't have any spare, then if you've got a couple that you like from your stash, go for your life. But I try to just use a small handful, but they are so beautiful and they work so well with this project. So I'm adding on now another three of those check beads and just sitting that down. So that, in essence, is the project pretty much made up already. What we would need to do now, if you're going to make this as earrings, I would make two side by side and I would do small stages so you can get that leaf to be about the same size and shape. Make sure that you've got the right number of beads, make sure that they sit at a similar length. And then what we're going to do is put a hanging loop on the top. Now, I don't know if I have another pair. I do have another pair of earring findings, which are these beautiful gunmetal colour. I love these and they're such a struggle to find to match in with my designs. And I quite often like a raw copper or something similar. And my hat's just slid off my head in case you wondered if I was slightly distracted. It's not a very good fit, if I'm honest. So we're going to add this on as an earring. And what we're looking at before we make our loop at the top is the orientation of our earring loop. Sometimes they sit in line with the wire, as this one does. Sometimes they sit in opposition to the wire. So because this one sits in line with the wire and you will want it to sit in this orientation to view, it means we need to make a sideways loop. So if I pop my pliers underneath and just hold that firmly, I'm going to put a nice sharp angle up at the top. And you'll notice I used my pliers to define that length. 
if you're making this as a pair of earrings, it's smart to get to this stage and then you can put the two pieces side by side and make sure that you make that angle the same distance above the last black bead as each other. And then you'll get a beautifully matched pair of earrings. So I'm going to pull in now my round nose pliers. You could equally use your smallest segment of your multi-step bail makers, or even I have been known, if I don't have my round nose pliers close to me, to use some uh, pliers designed for memory wire because they've got a nice small post on them. So whatever works for you best. What I'm going to do now is a wrapped loop. Now this is the mainstay of making jewellery with wire and I tend to teach it to people who are newer to wire in two stages. So I make this shepherd's crook shape, pop those pliers back in, draw that wire all the way around over the top and you can see that we've got a nice neat loop at the top there. You can spend a little bit more time making that perfectly round. Ideally, we want it to be centralized as seen against that core wire that travels down the center of our jewelry. Now, sometimes it's fun to have wiggly wires, but I like to make everything straight and then I can decide, I can put some wiggles and waves into these and make them opposite to one another symmetrically if I wish to. There's lots and lots of choices and options that you can make. So what I will then do is grip that loop. And now I'm not squishing anywhere the wires cross over at all, only just across the loop itself. And I'm going to draw the wire. And this is the beauty of 22 gauge. Look at how easy that is to move around. So I'm going to tighten that up slightly by pushing the bead up gently against it until I've got a really nice, neat coil of beads. Now, please be careful if you are newer to handling wire and beads, when you're using your tools, what I tend to do is cover the end of the bead with my thumbnail and then just tighten things up like so. So when you're newer to wire, it can save a little bit of heartache rather than shattering a bead. So if I flip the design over now at the rear of the design, I'm going to trim away using the flush side of my semi flush cutters. Oop. And I'm going to keep that for later because it will become useful at some point. It's such a lovely wire. Now, you might be able to see that there's a tiny sticky uppy bit. You can just about make it out. What we need to do is make sure that that is tidied away neatly. So find the best orientation for you. Again, be respectful of those beads and just tuck that down tidily. All that you need to do then is just open up your earring finding, whatever type fit you have, and close it back up. And you have got another beautiful red and black earring which won't go on the stand obviously such is the joy of live there we go let's pop that on to the end so oh, do you know what just ignore that bit so this is utilizing your eternal love design elements that gorgeous 22 gauge black craft wire from soft flex and we've quite quickly i think made a beautiful earring now when i was talking about making things a bit wiggly You've got a little bit of movement that you can apply if you want to. So you can mess around to your heart's content. You might like them to stand perfectly straight, as I do. Actually, I quite like them to be nice and straight. Jen, so, uh, yes. A look at this. Can we take a look at that leaf up close? It is so cool. I loved how it just it looks so complex, but you worked it up so easily. Yeah, bring that up to the camera. So if you like, I can grab a chunking great bit of heavy wire and show you that with some heavy copper wire on screen. I, do you know what I think I want to see with it, Gem, actually, is the backside, how the, uh -huh. the, the little line for the leaf comes down and then it is just kind of like. Let me grab this one it's slightly longer so you'll be able to see. It and just it's goes just around the tip and squishes down. I go by hand if pref if possible and just push that so that it lines up. Cool. It gets slightly blurry because we're out of focus. I can refocus if you like. I can, I can see it. I see what you're saying. Now, if anybody has any questions in the audience, please make sure to type them into the comments so that Jem can answer to you. But I see now what you've done, that you just looped Perfect. It, that line around, that leaf line, that central leaf line, and just flipped it on over the bottom tip of the leaf, that little curved lemon drop tip there and Absolutely. then you it up and it just kind of hides itself it does it's mechanical but it's beautifully mechanical yes it's great cool thank you you are more than welcome i am actually going to be wearing these myself i think that they are really attractive oh yeah um, they're so beautiful 
you know, I, I love red and black anyway. It's a classic sultry combination. If I could wear Halloween clothes all the year round, I probably would, to be fair. <laughs> you can. You can pull it off. Anyway, you know, and the thing about wearing outfits or jewelry, bold jewelry or whatever, if you feel confident in it, then you can rock it. It is all about how you feel. Absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly endorse self-expression through jewelry, through clothing. Um, Jolene, Jolene in the audience. Hi, Jolene. Hi. Uh, asked if you could also please show it with a chunky copper wire. I absolutely can. It will take nary a moment. So as ever, there are pieces of wire on my desk. This is a 16 gauge wire. I'm just going to trim the end away because it is slightly battered. It's been through usage already. I'm just going to give that a quick warm. Now you don't need to do this with your beautiful 22 gauge black wire. Please do not do this with the beautiful wire that we have from Softplex. This is a different animal altogether. It's just chunkier so you might be able to see slightly clearer. I'm going to make it quite large. Please also don't make your petal shapes this large. So we start off and I think we started about three or four inches from the end. I'm going much larger to show you in grande. So I will use my thumb to create the first half of that shape. And then I'll pop those pliers underneath and draw back really firmly. And then I just want to support that wire as I flare it back out to create the other half of that lemon shape. Like so. And you will want to keep this core wire as straight as possible because we'll be putting beads on that later. OK, so you've got that kind of lemon shape. And I'm going to support across that lemon shape with my pliers. Doesn't work quite as well with the heavy gauge wire as it does with the fine. And I'm going to wrap twice around the core. So that's one time and then a second time. And you can see because it's heavier wire, it's traveled further away. You can control it much more neatly with the gorgeous 22 gauge craft wire from Softflex. So I'm just going to tidy that up. Please don't do this with your beautiful craft wire. You won't need to because it will behave for you. So there's the lemon shape. And we've got those two rotations of wire all the way around that core. And then I'm going to create a wave. Now, the wave does go outside of the leaf shape or the lemon shape. And that's by design. So I'm going to bring the wire across the front of that leaf shape. Pinch and return in the opposite direction. So you get this almost like a wave. And then I'm going to ensure that it goes across the tip of that lemon. And then it's catching on the board, of course. Let's just turn that around. OK, we're going to have a look at the underside. So flip that over. And you can trim that down for your 22 gauge black craft wire. Uh, you probably need quite a small amount. I'm going to keep it quite long so you can see exactly what's happening. There it is from the side. There it is from the underside. I put my pliers just past the end of that lemon leaf and create a soft right angle so that it fits over the top. Now, I'm used to working with wire, so don't worry about my thumbs. Uh, with 22 gauge, you won't have any problem at all moving it over the top. It's a little bit firmer to handle when you're working with a 16 gauge wire. So we're just going to push that down until the very end of the wire just it doesn't clip on, but it meets itself. So if I turn that sideways, you can see that the wire has just gone around the end back on itself and from the front you can really barely see it if you need to you can just move it a little bit until it sits exactly where you want it to it doesn't have to sit centrally if you particularly wanted it to sit centrally you could make the tip of the lemon shape just a bit broader pop that in don't do this with your 22 gauge because it won't appreciate it but with this big fat chunky wire I can be a little bit more brutal with it so you can make that sit exactly how you want to hopefully that's a little bit more visible that was awesome Gem thank you so much for not a problem at all shall we have a look at our second project let's do it okay so there are two main sections to this project. Should I take it off the chain? Actually, I put it on a chain because I wanted to show that it could be worn as a pendant. This is some beautiful Jesse James chain that I just Thank so happen you. to have lying around. I love this one. I wear it all the time, by the way. So there are two main sections to this project. If I just put my hands through like so, 
we have the floral design. Now I've been making this for about eight years. It's one of the first things that I did with wire is start to make flowers. So we're going to make this flower and, oh look, lemons again, lemon shapes, what a surprise. I can also show you how to make this beautiful little vine and it's so springy and fun in the 22 gauge. It's strong enough to just be crafted. Maybe as a badge, it's a little bit light, but in your hair, absolutely perfect. Maybe as a pendant you'd like to. And I've just popped a loop on the back there so that I can attach it later to whatever I fancy. Now we can use the one of the Lucite, uh, it's almost like a bluebell drop kind of shape. And that just highlights the point at the back of the flower. If you don't want to use that, you don't have to. I think it looks lovely because of the contrast in colours. So let's grab ourselves our black wire again. And we are going to be using again the 22 gauge black from Softplex in Craft Wire. Let's just get that off screen. We need quite a lot. So I'm going to unspool a substantial amount and then I'm going to choose a size. Now my flower becomes the size it is. This is just slightly larger than the circular form I use. So if I make it with one of these Jesse James beads pots, you will be able to see it quite large on screen. I would suggest using something a little bit smaller when you're making your own flowers, unless you want to make gargantuan ones. So a ring mandrel is ideal or a hairspray lotion lid, whatever you've got around that is nice and solid and you don't mind wrapping wire around it. So what I will do is I need to have six rotations around the round form that we're using. So let me just unspool a bit more. I didn't unspool quite enough. I've taken about two feet now, about 24 inches, 60 centimetres off that reel. And I'm going to start a little way in from the end. Let's just pop you up there so you don't get caught. So I'm going to just use my thumb to trap the end. And I've got a spare four inches or so of wire. You would probably want to have a little bit more than that. But the reason I'm not doing more than that is because it will knock things off my screen. So give yourself maybe six or seven inches spare, pop your thumb on and then rotate. That's twice, three times, four times, five times. Gosh, I need even more than two foot because I'm working with such a large round form. And then there goes that sixth time. So again, on the other side, we will need, let's just cut this from the reel. That will make life slightly easier get that back out of the way. So I have got six rotations around my round form. Now these petals are going to be huge because the bead pot I'm using is quite large. It's probably about an inch and a half to two inches wide, uh, sorry, diameter across. So the first thing that I want to do is keep that not tense so that it's painful, but keep them side by side so that those lines don't um, get all muddled up. We want to have six straight lines and then they just cross over at the end. So where they cross over, I'm just going to rotate the form around. It's the easiest way I can show you what I'm doing. This, If you do this yourself, it will feel very, very weird. All we're doing is twisting those wires. Now we need to get them off the bead pot. So getting them um, not too tense is important. So we're looking to keep those round shapes. doesn't matter if they deform slightly. We need to keep them side by side. So you've got those six passes of wire. She says checking herself, making sure that there are indeed six. There are. One of these tails I need to take inside this bundle of wires. So if I just push that through and back out again, what I'm going to do again is twist. And this is how I would have done my twisting to begin with. But I wanted to show you the round form moving instead. So just like a key. I've just twisted that twice and this is why I've got shorter lengths than I need because it goes everywhere. So we've now secured six circular pieces of wire. You can do that really in whatever way makes you happy, but we need to secure them. So I've secured the six bundle together and then I've twisted those two tail wires again. Now these tail wires are what you will use to make any kind of loop to attach this to a thing. If you've got a really, really tiny amount, don't worry, you can simply just sew your materials together using accessible parts of your design. It's not something to fret over. So in order to make the lemon shape, what I want to do is just start very, very cautiously making those six loops into slightly more oval formation. Chain nose pliers are the next thing for the job. And what we want to do is just 
make that nice and oval, and then find the direct opposite to where we've tied everything together. And then grip carefully and gently at the end of the form. And what I'm going to do is the first move I'm going to do is this. I'm going to twist one way. I'm going to grip that and twist one way. And then I'm going to go to the other side of the shape I make and twist the other way. So if I show you exactly what I'm doing first and foremost, I'm pushing with my non-dominant thumb against the curve here. And you'll see that we've got the first half of that lemon shape made by pliers. So they'll all be the same kind of size. We want to then put those pliers into that little notch shape that we've made on the end, making sure that they don't move around too much. And then I'm supporting with my non-dominant forefinger on this side to generate those shapes. Now, they do tend to waggle around a little bit and you can play until you get that exactly how you want it to sit. But we now have six very similar lemon shapes or, or leaf shapes, if you prefer. So what I'm going to do now is just pull the tail wires over to one side so I can show you an above view because this is where the magic happens. I'm going to separate those two, uh, sorry, the six wires into two bundles of three and just open it out. And it is literally like opening a clamshell, opening the petals of a flower. So I've got two bundles. If I draw that down to the bottom, it looks like a child's representation of leaves on a flower. We just need the flower on top. There you go. I've made kid art. Go me. So we have got two bundles and there are three lemon shapes on either side. And as I said, this is way, way larger than you would want to make in uh, this wire. It is much better to make something a little bit smaller. So you can use a ring mandrel or a small torch or something similar to that. I've got a piece here which I use for both illuminating and also as a nice solid form. This is, uh, I want to say aluminium, stainless steel, maybe, I don't know, but it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch across and it's perfect for a design like this. And I haven't had to go out and buy another tool, which is always good. So I'm going to look at the top section now. I've just twisted it round through 90 degrees, pop that back up into the corner so that you can see I've got my two bundles and there are three wires in each bundle. And all we're going to do is delicately open these out. And it doesn't matter what order they go in. The top one can be in the middle. The bottom one can be over to one side. It doesn't matter. What we're looking to do is just open those flower petals out carefully. And then I'm going to flip that over onto the other side. It looks a bit more, more like a pad paradja at this stage. The reason I teach with an even number of petals is because it's easier to do this part of the design. Um, if you're trying to do so, often in nature, we have five petals because it, it sits more symmetrically. So you've got one, two, three, four, five on this piece. But for this design to work, it's even numbers so that you can split the bundle in half. It's possible to do it uh, differently, obviously, with odd numbers. However, um, uh, for the purposes of teaching today, I've gone for six. So what we're going to do then is just start pulling these shapes so that they separate. Sometimes you will find that a bundle just moves better in one direction than the other. So you can reform this as you go and just gently and carefully separate out those wires that one's popped through. So there we go. That's better. And you might need to just gently coerce the wires to sit exactly where you want. Now, in order to get the design looking a bit more floral and less like a drawing or one of those things that you give to small children, you know, that catches the wind. What we can do is add some shape and form to the petals themselves. So if I just uh, scooch a couple of them out of the way for a moment, we'll work on this one first. What I tend to use is my finger. <laughs> but if you don't want to use your finger, you can use a round form like this handy little tube. And I'm creating a bend in that petal. So you can see that there's just a very soft bend. And then I put the tube on top and bring the rotate the tip back up towards me. And you can play around with this design endlessly. So you've got a really quite a dramatic bend on that one. If we bring the next one over, what you could do if you wanted to is you could bend down the, I, the uh, petal downwards first and then the tip outwards. And you can alternate the designs in that way. You get much more of a 3D effect if you start adding some a, a little bit more definition to the petals themselves. So like I said, you can use forms to help you. It's a lot quicker for me to just simply 
bend those wires around. And I'm just going to put that one in the same orientation simply because I prefer it. And suddenly you've got something that's a little bit more lifelike. Now from that angle, it looks patently hideous. But if you size this down, you will get something a little bit more attractive. That's the basis of the technique. If I just pull out then those two wires that are at the back, and what we can do is add one of those lucite drop flowers. So you'll need to thread both of your tail wires through that lucite flower form. Which I know I did because, look, it literally goes through there. So oh, it's just because it's slightly bent over at the end. Maybe make sure they're straight first. There we go. And when you pop that underneath, it just adds a pop of colour to your design. Like I said, this is way, way larger. And the reason I've made it so large is so that you can see more clearly how to create the piece itself. Like I said, I think it's much prettier when it's smaller. All I've done with this design is just simply twisted these two wires together. There goes one of the pots. It's not a gem hawks tutorial if I don't knock something flying. So let me just separate out those two spare wires. This was the little tail that we had on either end. What we're going to do is just twist this like a key. And if you put the same little bit of tension into it, there are tools that you can use to help you twist wires, but I much prefer twisting wires by hand because it gives you an opportunity to learn how wire works. So we're taking this up from a 22 gauge. When you double a 22 gauge, you get approximately, it's not exactly the same, but approximately a 16 gauge. So it's 0.6 millimeters across at 22 gauge. And uh, 16 gauge is about 1.25. So it's not exact maths. But if we just keep on twisting, keep on swimming, get that all the way. I can't actually really commit to taking that all the way to the end. So I'm just going to trim that away. You've then got a nice sturdy piece of wire that's equivalent to a much heavier gauge, which you can create a wrapped loop in exactly the same way as we did at the top of the earrings. I don't want to repeat techniques all the time. So just exactly the same technique. You make a right angle, create a circular form, bring the tail all the way around. Now, obviously, when you're bringing the tail around, it's a little bit more substantial when you're working with that twisted wire. So it won't act exactly the same, but the key technique is the same. Now, this is much larger than it ought to be, which is why it's kind of getting away from me slightly. But if you make that small enough, you will end up with this design. Now, I am going to show you very, very quickly how to create great big long strands of this kind of thing. Now, I refer to this as vine work. Again, it's something that I love doing. Now, I have a scrap of wire. What I will do at the very, very end of the scrap of that wire is very similar to the technique that we've already learned, which is to create a small leaf like so. You don't have to have all of the fanciness if you don't want to. So let's just make that leaf shape to begin with. And I appreciate I've already shown this to you, so it's, I'm not going to talk through it fully, but we're making that leaf shape again, and then we're wrapping the tail around the core wire. If you want to bring the section of wire down over the top, if like I have, you've cut this too short, something you can do to not have to start again is put a very small circle on the end of that tail and then draw it to the center of your leaf. So I love making mistakes on air because it gives me an opportunity to show you how cool accidents. Was it Bob Ross that said you have happy little accidents? There's never a mistake. Mm -hmm. Or like Concur, I wholeheartedly agree with that in my wire work. It's how I've learned more than anything else. So we've got the beginning to our vine. I've got one little leaf shape on the end. What I'm going to do now is just two extra leaves on the side. Now, these won't have any infill. I'm putting a right angle, and this is just about a quarter of an inch along from where my first leaf exists. And then even smaller than that, an eighth of an inch along, I'm putting another right angle. I'm going to recreate that same kind of leaf shape. This wire is an absolute dream to work with. It's super malleable. But once you've worked with it, it will hold this shape for you. So if I grip the tip there and just bring that back around. So you can see we've made a head leaf. This is the end of the vine. We've come down a quarter of an inch, come out to one side. And then after one eighth of an inch, we've created another leaf. We've made a fair few leaves with me now. So what I'm going to do is bring that tail around that 
tiny one eighth of an inch section. It's only taken two wraps of wire to fill that in. So that's what we've got so far. And what I tend to do with my vines, although you can have them all on the same side, is I like to alternate. So we're going to come down. It, if you wanted to recreate the distances, it would be a quarter of an inch. Make that little right angle. And then one eighth of an inch along from there, we would make another right angle. I'm twisting this around because I'm right dominant and I can't do it with my left hand. And I'm going to create yet another little leaf shape. And the wire works so beautifully just between, you don't have to have long, strong nails, just a little bit of control. Sometimes it's easier to learn with your fingers than with your pliers. It's a great tool actually to try that out. If it doesn't work, then grab your pliers. All is well and nothing is lost. So I've made the first half of my second leaf on the vine. Draw that out and then draw it immediately back around. So we've made yet another funky little lemon shape. I'm going to grip across the two wires that are outside of the leaves, but not on the nexus point where they cross over. And then I'm going to wrap a couple of times. And you know what? I'm not worried about that not being tight. It's a vine. Vines are fun and organic. If you want to take extra time than I am taking and make this absolutely pristine and perfect, if you're making bridal jewellery, for instance, perhaps you might want to make these all exactly the same. For me, it's quite an organic design. And then you just come down again. Guess how long? Another quarter of an inch, right angle bend. And then I'm going to make an turn again one eighth of an inch up and just continue and this is something I do if I have a slump of some kind if I can't make anything I will simply get some wire out and I will make myself some vine leaves or a great big long section of vine work like this and I'll find that you can add little gemstones or little beads and there's so many more beads in the eternal love that you can add on you can even if you want to if I just re-straighten this you can put beads on between the vines that you're creating it's really, really beautiful when you do that. So if I just re-bend that out, you can see that we would continue with another leaf on this side, wrap around the stem, quarter of an inch. You can add a bead if you want to, you don't have to. And you can just continue in that same way. When you get to the end of your wire, I would say give yourself a good two and a half to three and a half inches of spare wire on the end. And that gives you the opportunity to wire on to whatever you're working with. So for instance, with this piece, I made all of my vine and then I attached it just by rotating it around. Let me just pull those other, I'm going to destroy my flower now, but please don't worry. I'll try and remake it later, but it doesn't matter because I'm trying to show you what I, what I would suggest you do. So I've made this great big long vine of uh, little leaves. You can add beads, you don't have to add beads. And then I'm going to rotate the tail of wire from my vine around that core wire at least three or four times. Now, if you work with fascinators or you work with wedding jewellery or if you want to make artificial flowers that can be kept forever for the wedding day, then adding strength to this wire by rotating that cable, that wire, sorry, around again, it just makes this all the more sturdy. Now I have made these as boutonnieres for gentlemen as well as fascinators for ladies, uh, as corsages for the wrist. Um, so there's a lot of movement on how and where you can use this design. I've absolutely mangled that one. So I'm going to show you the pretty one instead. Hopefully you have enjoyed making with me today at the Design Elements Eternal Love Mix. I've got three earrings now. Well, I've only got two ears. What to do? I don't know how to fix that. Do I get another piercing done? <laughs> there we go. So that's what we've learned together today. I did want to show you very, very quickly. I also received some beautiful soft flex beading wire, which is, is something that I have always referred to as tiger tail. And it is an absolute joy to work with really really gorgeous so all i've done is i have looped through one of those dinny dinny black check beads with a section of the green i chose because i thought it was really naturalistic to go with the black and the red and i've looped through one on the end turned it sideways up through three beads both tails of the wire through a lucite drop flower through one of those beautiful bead caps and then up created a loop used one of my gorgeous gunmetal crimps and these are like gold dust for me I absolutely love those and then crimped and trimmed away and you've got an earring in 
probably 46 seconds, I want to say. It really doesn't take long. So design ideas that you can add in utilising your kit. You can have another pair of earrings. You can make yards and yards and yards and yards of that gorgeous vine work. But if you want to use more of these pieces from your Eternal Love collection, I lost the bracelet bust then. Let's pop those up and out of the way. Very, very quickly made this the other night. So this again is using the beautiful soft flex beading wire in, I don't know what this is actually called. Does it say anywhere on there? It's, I mean, it's green. Okay? It's, it's peridot. Peridot. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's perfect is what it is. And I've looped through one end of my, uh, I would call it a lobster parrot claw, something like that. And I've just done a tiny bit of ladder. Now, I'm sure that you are familiar with ladder weaving, but I've just taken those two strands through a bead, separated the two strands, added on three beads, and then taken those two strands and crossed them over. And you get this lovely opening in between, drawn them back together, and I've made a bracelet in probably about nine minutes maximum. And that's utilising all of those gorgeous beads from the Eternal Love collection. A couple of crimps, one clasp, and I really like it. And I might wear that this Halloween. <laughs> Gem, this has been just so cool to watch you design these projects. You know, I was very excited. There she is. Hello. <laughs> there kind she of jaunty, is. no? <laughs> um, I'm going to invite Danielle into the, um, into the room here. Oh, Danielle. lovely. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Real quick before we intro Danielle, I just need to say how cool it was, Jem, to learn the earring project and to have you walk us through creating that leaf design, that lemon leaf, however it looks or feels or, or, or sounds right for you, creating that leaf design. Then Jem showed us the leaf design in a little bit of a thicker gauge wire just so we could really get the visual for it. Now, from there, Jem taught us how to create this beautiful flower, which I cannot wait to see everyone give it a go. The 22 gauge wire is super malleable. You can do this. And I'm so excited to see everyone's renditions of this. Jem, you did such a great job teaching this project. It looked hard, but when you did it, the way you walked us through it, I feel confident. I promise you, even if you're really, really new with wire working, a design like this is achievable. That flower design, I've been, honestly, I learned wire working in 2014, and it was one of the first things that I kind of just, ah, this is brilliant, I get it, I get it. So if that's the moment for you, and it turns you on to working with wire and jewelry, that will make me super happy. And what an inspiration too, guys. Jem has not been doing, Jem has been doing wire work for less than 10 years. Can you believe this? No. You're a star. Are you so good? Bless your heart. That's really kind. I'm not good at taking praise. I'm going to change my hat. This one is <laughs> slipping off. So wait, wait. I have an alternative. Oh. oh yes. <laughs> yes. yes. You're so witchy. I love I'm that. Delightfully <laughs> evil. <laughs> so cool <laughs> <laughs> thank you lovely how are you i'm doing great i loved your class i made the earrings oh fantastic oh let's see hold on hold on let's have oh, a look. They look amazing yeah yeah absolutely I, um, fantastic i love it i love the leaves. the leaves are so cool isn't it gorgeous though it's so easy so simple oh. so quick to make up and then oh, you just yes. put them everywhere love them. <laughs> oh my gosh Oh, thank you, you so much. You are so amazing. I feel very honored to be amongst the presence of Gem Hawks and the amazing Danielle Wicks. You both are just, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so welcome, Danielle and Gem. Thank you so much for this fantastic tutorial. It's always a treat to learn with you. And I want to just let everybody know, because I know someone, Marisol, was commenting in the crowd how wonderful Gem's YouTube channel is. You can search Gem Hawks, just the way it's spelled right here on YouTube. And you can watch this wire working Wonder Woman all the time, on demand. And catch That's her so kind. Yes, absolutely. You are a star, Gem. And you can watch Gem also on Jesse James Beads on Facebook every Thursday afternoon. I'm there. Whether you want me or not. <laughs> <laughs> we want you. Very much so. <laughs> oh, well, Jem, thank you so much again for today. And I hope you have a wonderful Saturday evening. Thank you so much. 
Much appreciated. As ever, it's been my pleasure and an absolute honour to be here with you, to work with Softflex, to work with Jesse James again. It makes my heart just, ah, pity patty. Our, the feeling is mutual, my friend. <laughs> yes. Well, shall I love you and leave you? And uh, I look forward to catching up with your project, Danielle, also. Oh, I will catch you. up with you tomorrow. Wonderful. Bye, Jam. Thank Bye, you. Bye, darlings. Bye. Hello, <laughs> Welcome, Miss Danielle. How are you today? It's so great to have you. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. We are wrapping up our trick or treat jewelry making party with Softlex Company and Jesse James Beads. We have worked with Sarah Ayler yesterday and then Brittany Chavers. Today we kicked off with Gem Hawks and now we get to wrap up with the incredible Danielle Wicks. Danielle, thanks for coming out here today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I've got a lot of fun. This has been a really great projects. I love them. Yeah, I feel like this kit was just really, really fun for all the designers to work with. Like Jesse James Beads does, we do other events. We do summer camp. Danielle mm -hmm. was with us for summer camp and also Beads and Blooms in the spring. We've got winter workshop upcoming. And the thing that's that's different about those events is that the kits are um, very grandiose and each designer has their own set of products. Um, this one, we give the products to the designers and say, make something with this rather than having the designers create something. And then we get the, the kit to supply for it. It's two different like ways of, of, of planning from, from this standpoint. Um, but anyway, I have really enjoyed watching you, Danielle and Jem, Brittany and Sarah come up with projects completely based on a kit. Um, and I know that you work with seed beads a lot. Like every time we've had you here for Jesse James and events in the past, it's been seed bead related. And now this is something a little bit different. So tell tell me about your take on this project and and what's um what's gotten you excited. I love being able to try different things because yeah, like you said, I'm doing seed beads mostly all the time now. And so getting to just do some creative stringing and some fun looping with the bead wire and a little bit of wire work, um, I get excited about that. Just putting bigger beads together. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And do you know what? So yesterday, Danielle was with us at the trick or treat after party, our Zoom after party. And Danielle, you were telling us about Magical Mystery Bead Box and you oh, and yes. Alex, your, your kiddo, um, opening up the boxes and just like how the beads are a little bit bigger. Um, mm -hmm but that they are exciting for you and, and for him. And that makes me feel really good, um, especially from someone that I know works with seed beads a lot, to know that you can accept and love bigger beads in your heart makes, um, makes us at Jesse James feel really good. Oh, yes. Yeah, for sure. Me too. I just I love playing with all beautiful beads. And these are among the most beautiful out there. And those boxes are smashing. I love those. Every time I open one, I'm all excited. <laughs> Well, we at Jesse James and, and also at Softlex are so, we're so honored to be able to work with such cool and creative designers like you. Oh, thank you. It's like, it's oh, everything. That's awesome. Um, Danielle, I'm going to add your overhead camera into the stream here so we can take a look okay. at your mat here. Yeah. So Fun. this is the yeah. most beautiful strand. <laughs> I love it. It's um, Witching Hour. And the navy blue and the turquoise together with the purple, that's just cool. It really came out so nice. And I just didn't really have to think that hard about designing with it. It designed itself kind of. Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm and so um, this pendant. So this pendant is really, really cool. It's very light too, which I, th I thought was very neat. And then it kind of waves when you're wearing it. That's so fun. Um, and so what I did is, well, I did three things. I did a pair of earrings, which I'll show at the end over, well, I'll grab them really quick, but I used um, the wrong chain on the first ones. Um, and so I'm working on another version like these that's gonna have a little waterfall. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. And we get to learn how to make that today? Yeah, yeah, I grabbed that and I have one ready to go and then I'll show the, the other one just from the chain reaction. Um, and then I made these little dangles at the end. Oh, this is so, so cool. They're like a little coily, webby looking 
cute thing. So I thought we could play with that. And then this is just really easy stringing, but it's kind of a unique way. It's got four strands going through wow. it. Wow, so, wow, really? Yeah, so you can pop out and, and really get a look at those spacers because the, the Jesse James bead strands, I always love. There are always these gorgeous like caps and spacers and interest elements that, but when you string them, they're hidden by the beads, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I wanted to see them. I wanted to see them front and center. So we did we did like a little weaving thingy here. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Danielle, you have such creative ways of using beads. I mean, like I know we always put seed beads in your hands every time we work together, but gosh almighty, look at what you've done with this strand. It's so cool. Oh, thank you so much. I had a really good time with it. And I, I did, I have to give a nod to a book um, that was published by Kristen and Sarah from Softlex called yes. Seed Bead Revolution because, um, and that's why I said we, is because I actually took that from them, how they did this part, to how they do this like little looping. Cause I saw them do that in a couple projects in that book and I've just been taken with it. So there's a lot going on here, but it's really easy. All of it's super, super relaxing. And yeah, just really fun. Oh my gosh, I, I love it. And I also think that Thank that's you. great that you gave a nod to, to Kristen and Sarah's book because that everyone that's watching right now live and anyone that catches the replay later, um, it's, there's so much knowledge and inspiration out there. You oh, can yeah. see something in a book, you could watch a tutorial right now and you might make the project just like it is like that, the outfit that's on the mannequin, or you might turn it around and, and, and feel your creative juices spark themselves. And then all of a sudden there's a new design that hadn't even been born yet. Absolutely. Yeah. I do, I do tend to see techniques. Like I'll, I'll go through inspiration projects from other artists. And the thing I'm honing in on is, wow, that technique they used opened so many doors for my, for ideas for me to kind of just change it up and, but incorporate, it's like a new tool, getting a new tool from in the brain. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. That. yeah. Cause I know like everyone loves getting a new tool, you know? What yeah, I mean? for sure. <laughs> oh my God. I have so many. <laughs> a new tool for up here. <laughs> yeah. For wow. real. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like last but not least, I threw together a bracelet and it was just because mm -hmm. I had a leftover focus bead. Um, I had one of these left at the end of making it because I kind of did like a symmetrical thing here. Mm -hmm. So I had this beautiful bead and then I had this cat. And so I made like a little double layered bracelet that just goes oh around God. and it's super cute. Oh, I love it. Okay. So we're making a lot of projects. I'm going to keep us down on the hand cam. Are you ready to get going? I'm ready. Yeah. I'm going to start with the necklace. I was thinking that's probably the one that takes the longest and is, um, it's the one that, you know, needs the most space. So let me clear off some of the stuff here. And you'll need the set up by the way. Look how cute Danielle's mat is with the little flowers there. It's beautiful. <laughs> I needed it to be like festive and that would be kind of cool. So um, so what, I, what I'm going to do first is cut a pretty good length of the, the black medium soft flex. And so you can, of course, adjust this to your desired length. But what I have here, it's basically a little, a little bit shy of 15 inches on each side in one direction. But keep in mind, it's doubled. So you, you're going to be cutting two strands that are about 35 inches long. And those strands... Um, they, they work, they work doubled. So your necklace isn't going to be 35 inches, but if you want it to be longer, because there are a lot of extra beads in this kit, you could absolutely expand this. And of course you can shorten it if you'd like to. This one, when it's, when it's like being worn right now in this, the way I'm going to teach it, as you're wearing it, the pendant is going to hang at about the 15 inch mark down from your neck. So it's a really good length for a, a focal pendant, I feel like. And I can try it on later after um, the demo and show you what the length looks like and everything. So you can change it up if you want. Um, but yeah, about 35 inches and do that twice of the of the um, medium soft flex in black. And then also when I was talking to um, Sarah at the end of our, our uh, class we did on Wednesday and she was saying how beautiful this would look with the other wire colors too, particularly the green, the peridot. So if you want to change that up, feel free to do that too. So there's my first strand. Get that one ready. And here's my second one. I'm measuring these off, a, off of the mat here, but 35 inches, two times. 
So that's going to use most or pretty close to all of your wire. I had just enough left here to do like a bracelet after that. And go ahead and bring your two of the ends together. So again, these are two strands and each of these strands is 35 inches long. Two of them, bringing the end together. And I'm gonna move this aside real quick. Take the pendant first and go ahead and just bring the two ends through the pendant and then bring it together with the other side, the other ends over on the other side to kind of like find a midpoint and just bring it all the way down to the midpoint. So what you have here is the two strands of soft flex going through your pendant suspended at the midpoint. And up here on the other side, I'm holding the, the top of those two strands. And so how's everyone feeling about that? Is that, um, does that make sense? Or did I lose anyone? Looks like. I think, that makes, I think that makes sense. Okay. So yeah, so you have the two through the pendant mm -hmm. and then the top that forms four. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be working, each side's gonna be worked with two strands now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the beads free from this one here. He escaped. There we go. <laughs> All these I love, the I love the colors of the strand too. It's, it really, you know, it's it's yeah. Halloween without being Halloween. Like it has a little spooky to it, but you could wear this all year. Yes, absolutely. That's the first thought I had. And this crystal, oh my gosh, look at that. I know. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's a really beautiful, beautiful strand. I mean, I love them all. I'm always excited about them, but I, I really love this one. And these are like, these are navy blue. Like if you take a really close look at them. How cool is that? They're like a denim lapis color. It's just a really neat color. I, I was impressed by that. And I'm going to get some Rolla. These are four and a half millimeter Rolla. And they're really cool because you can fit four strands of soft flex medium through them. So bonus. But um, so, and of course, feel free to change up this design. It's going to work no matter what configuration you decide to go with. But what I did, I'm just going to stick to the um, original sample is again, we're bringing that pendant to the midpoint and we're taking the ends of the wire here. Let me bring them back. They got a little moved away. Bringing all four of those ends together. And then just, there's that, that one at the center. And then grab your boho bead and bring them all four through it. And you know, a little bit of patience. It takes a second to get them all through. And I was, this is the only part I was a little remotely nervous about demoing, but if it helps, you can always bring them through two at a time. Yeah, the boho beads are all handmade. This is a, a bead that is very signature to Jesse James beads. It's a polymer clay that's oh. been rolled to get its shape. And then we add some embellishments and sparkles and all kinds of cool stuff to it. But like, because of the handmade nature of it. Sometimes the hole in the middle can be a little bit wiggly. Um, they're made on dowels on like little skinny straws. Oh, wow. That is so cool. Mm, yeah, they are really cool. And this is, um, this is a custom design for this kit. It's, oh, wow. It's custom. Oh, it's so mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Really cool. We thought it was really witchy. And it's just, it's the perfect focal for this design. It absolutely just makes the design. And so I've got it almost, I've got all three through. And what I started doing is just kind of feeding them through individually until I get there. And it will go through. You just have to give yourself a little grace and patience. And it always works out. And there they go. All four of them are through. And then just go ahead and bring that down. And so when you get to the bottom, those loops are going to sit kind of you know, a little bit organically, but mine, mine are pretty good. They're just, um, you don't want to go too tight on the pendant because you want it to have a little air on the jump ring and be able to have that just sway. And so I just, I went about like that much and it is going to move around a little bit. This isn't like a locked in stone design. It's, it's, um, I think it was Brittany, uh, who mentioned that she just loves pieces that you can wear that are kind of like where you can fidget with the position of the beads. Mm -hmm. I am the same. I actually really love jewelry where you can, you can slide stuff around on it and play with it. And so this design's absolutely one of those kinds of designs. And so I brought on one of the sparkly, gorgeous little beads there. It's a hematite crystals. It's so really pretty. It's like black diamond. 
So that's next. So you're going boho bead and then that. Slide that down. And then what I did after that was I locked it in with a roller bead. So I'm going to bring all four of these through a roller. And this is a, a snugger ish fit. It's not like tight, but it's snug enough that when you place it down here, it kind of slides into. And what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to switch this order because I noticed on one side. Yeah, there we go. One side, the roller tends to fit and kind of sit a little bit toward the top. So just play with it and see what you come up with. There we go. Yay. Okay, so my goal was to have the roller not totally sink in, and that's what it's doing here. Oh, okay. So wait yeah. a second. So, so you're saying that large um, sparkly bead, one side is a little smaller than the other? Yes. Yeah, totally. And so one side will have, and you'll just need to test it when you're putting it together, but one side the roller will like go all the way in and one side it won't. See that one? Oh, it's not, interesting. not going through, but I can sometimes get them through the other. Not always, um, but test it and see which side you like. But there'll always be a side it won't slide in. And that's the one you want to have as your top. That is a good tip and trick for this design right here. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And I mean, even if it slid in there, it'd still be cute. It'd still work out. I just liked it because it gave me like a, um, a way to kind of tighten it a little bit. And so from here, you just want to separate the two strands. And it kind of doesn't matter if you've lost track of which was which because they're they're locked in now and it's no biggie. So it just picks which sides. I kind of what I did is I took a look at it and I decided which ones naturally kind of went left and right. And I'm looking at it and thinking it's like that. They naturally kind of go that way without me having to pull them around. And so that's what I what I did. And then you'll want to put two roller on each one just to kind of bring you up from the pendant. We're trying to get a, get room for our bigger beads there. So here's one and two on that side. And over here, same thing, just two on this side. All right. And so now you get to just choose, be kind of creative, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I just started going with, I did a couple small beads first to, you know, kind of get away from the larger beads. And then as I got up here, I started going with the larger and traveling up. And so I'm going to show you how I did the different, there's two different types of stringing happening here. One where you're going through, one where you're using just one and one where you're looping. So uh, I'll show each one of those and we'll just those, um, go along to the top. So let's see, I went with this one, put the next bead, the next interest bead, put it on just one strand and slide that down. And so it's going to have one strand coming along the outside of it, which makes it look like, um, like some of those like knotted, uh, if you've seen like those really pretty wax linen knotted pieces that uh, lots of folks like to do, they, where they have one of the strands outside the bead. That's the look I was kind of going for. And plus it has like a webby look. And there's three rolla brought on on top of it to kind of lock it in. But so you can move it around and kind of play with it. Same thing over here. I'm going to choose an interest bead. One of these. Bring that on. Just one. Just one of those strands there. Slide that down. And one of the strands will kind of like sit either in front of or behind it, whichever one you like. And then three rolla. I bring those on. So there's step one and the, don't worry about difference in heights because the best thing about this is you can just adjust it, slide it up and kind of make a match. And as you add each new section, the former section's height becomes committed to. So like, so when I add the next beads here, it will kind of keep these in place and they don't, they don't move around too much after that. See there, you can slide a, slide a bead or two, maybe a millimeter back and forth, but they're not moving up the strand any further. So that's my goal. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to keep stringing and adding the beads in a way that appeals to me. And, and you don't have to use the same beads that I've used. You can swap them around, but I'll bring one more on here. Do the same three roller. 
and the rollet are going on both strands while the beads are going on just one. It's just, it gives air to the design. Makes it just look even more like a web. And I'm gonna grab a square crystal. Now in that one, I felt strongly like the shiny side was gonna be my front. So I'm putting that one in the front of the wire. And then three rolla coming on both of both of the medium soft flex strands here. Okay. And so next up, I'm going to do two things that are different. So in one side, I'm going to string one of these beautiful, beautiful beads. And how I did that, the way the holes are situated on this bead is you have a clear opening on the bottom. And then when you get to the top, you'll want to kind of choose which way to go. So here's actually, this is the bottom. And as you come up, what I did to make it so that it stayed, you know, exactly like front and center is I, I kind of crisscrossed the wires through it. So I brought it up like this and brought that one out the back and then the other one coming up this way and out the top. So how that looked was starting from here. So see this one's exiting from the front like that. I'm going to take this one back out, just kind of flip it over and push that out the back through one that's closer to the top there. There we go. I love these roses because you can really, or, or and any of the Jesse James cage beads, because you can really string them in so many different ways. Oh yeah, yeah, so true. And that was and a really great thing. technique for, for getting that bead so perfectly straight. I love it because it can make the, um, as you're wearing it, it makes it the focal that you see as the very first thing, like at the, at the front. Like it doesn't turn sideways ever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. And so over here, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna grab one of these cool jack spacers and with one of the strands, so separate your strands a little bit here. Take your spacer and hold it, you know, kind of like at an angle, a 90 degree angle, bring one through this way and one through this way. And this was that that technique from Seed Bead Revolution. That was just this gem. Bring it down like that. Leaving some air and then bring this up like that. And so there's your kind of, and it moves, you can move it around, but it's it's a um, tighter move, right? So you can slide it, but it will hold its position otherwise. And now bring three roll on both strands to kind of lock that in. How cool is that? Very cool thing to do with Heishi spacers too. Like if you have just a handful of Heishi and you wanted to, um, like for example, I think it would be a cool bracelet to take like uh, and do this over and over with Heishi and just kind of almost minimalist-y design. And it does add some height also. So at this point, my design has started to have like an almost, um, what I've been trying to do is keep the heights the same. So I'm gonna put the ruler back on here. But what did what I'm what I was meaning there is that it enabled me to make the spacer match in height on my necklace with my rose. So these are completely different size beads. But because you can string it this way, I'm not losing out on keeping the symmetry of the height like that. It's a little bit you know, a little bit different, but down here is a little, yeah. So that's pretty much all three techniques. And I'm just gonna keep going. And please jump in if anyone has questions about any of these steps. It doesn't take very long to finish it. It's a really fast string. And then I can show the crimping. I love the way that this necklace comes together, Danielle. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I was hoping you'd like it. I, I had I a really fun time. It. And I just think it's so fun to do a stringing project. Like it's very, um, you know, you can allow your creativity to go wild. Like Danielle just showed us three different ways to string. So that's cool. But really like we can all make this project however speaks to us, you know, let the beads do the talking and then string them in the way that, that, uh, that feels best. Absolutely. I love that. Let the beads do the talking. That's cute. <laughs> and it's actually exactly what I was thinking is, what does this bead want me to do? 
and it wants to be it wants to be seen. So that's what we'll do. Wow, that is so cool how you do that. So it's just literally just like crisscrossing the bead, the spacer bead through its hole. Yeah, I mean, this is so much potential for, you know, like um, a lot of like the African trade beads, like the, the spacer disky kind, mm -hmm. those, you yeah. want to see them. And, and a lot of them are like they're 12 millimeter discs. And like, what are you going to do with 12 millimeters, right? So get, being able to see it, this is one way you could you could do that. Yeah, and it just makes it just gives the spacer beads such such different life, you know, to be able to see this side of them. Yeah, it. exactly. So I just bring it on one of these, and at this point, I'm just kind of freestyling, just going. And I might need a few more roll in a minute, but I've got a pretty good stack here. I used every bead in the strand. Yes. With the exception of this one, I saved for the cat. And uh -huh. then these became earrings. Because I thought that I needed earrings. So those, but all the other beads got used, including those little spacers. Oops, I left one of my beads out there. I am a big fan of, of seeing our designer friends use all the beads in a set. Like Brittany used every single bead in that bead mix yesterday. And I thought that was just so impressive. impressive. <laughs> I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. I mean, that was so neat. She used every single one. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an MVP status award to be able to be to use every single bead in the Jesse James beads mix. That's a lot of beads. Well, she had the biggest challenge because her, her she had a there were a lot of beads in that mix for her to use up. There were so a she lot had of really hard. <laughs> Yeah, and then all that cord too. And if you are just tuning in today and have no idea what Danielle and I are talking about, this was part one yesterday of the Trick or Treat Jewelry Design event with Jesse James and Softlex. Part one was last night. It aired at 7 p.m. Eastern. But you can catch the replay over either on the Jesse James or Softlex pages in the video section. And we'll be posting these videos to our blog and sending out emails next week. So don't you worry if you missed something. We'll keep you up to date. I'm going to go back and make Britney's. I definitely want to make that one. I know. I'm really excited to make Sarah's candy corn necklace too. I was going to do it before class started today and then I just ran out of time. So after this is over. Yeah, I made a start on candy corn and I just haven't started the one from Brittany yet because I need to watch and see like a couple of the things that she was doing while she wrapped the fairy silk. Mm -hmm. I want to study that a little bit more. It's just so cool. So, so neat. And just going to bring on the spacer here. I'm going a little faster because I was figuring everybody's pretty much got it, but please let me know if, if I'm going too fast. Look how cool that Heshi spacer looks. I mean, that Heshi spacer is so teeny. It is a sliver on the strand. But then when you string it up like this, Danielle, when you use that technique, wow, it just, I don't know. It just lets the, it's, it lets the spacers shine. It gives them their time in the sun. It does. Yeah. And then you get, you get lots of like a cool, like webby looking effect. And yeah. I just thought it was like the perfect Halloween. Uh-huh. I'm getting pretty close to being done on that side. Almost there. Got those three on. And on this side, I just thought I'd do another one of these little loops. And this is this is freestyle at this point. I'm not really matching what I did before. But I'm gonna try to use them all. I've only, I've only got two, three beads left. All right, let's take a look at my length and see where I need to add length. It looks like I want to add a little bit on this side. So fun. Danielle, when you do the next Heshi, or if you use one of your, your jacks, we call them sprocket spacers here at Jesse James. But when, <laughs> um, can you show us that technique, the crisscross technique, one more time? Stephanie Marie's asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stephanie. 
Yep. So what I'm going to do over here, oops, I got four on there, is um, let's put it here. So take, um, so we what we have so far is the three Rolla. They're on both strands of the Softlex. And so what I'm going to do here is separate these strands now. And with, with the Heishi kind of facing like that direction, right, we're going to go through it this way with one side. Let me bring it over in the center a little bit. And then through it the other way. So we'll do this twice because I've got one more left over there. But basically you separated the strands down here and then you brought it through one way and then through that way. And then just start bringing it down and then bring it up. Ta-da! And then you'll need to do something that brings those strands together, like put it through both strands through some kind of bead. And in this case, I just chose to put them through um, three roll of beads. And that was kind of the pattern I went with, but you can change this up any pattern you like. And then I'm just going to take a look at my length again, see where I need to add. I need to add one more thing over here. And I've got this one. So go through here. And then bringing this one through the other direction. And we'll just bring that up. All three going through the roller. And you can adjust this. Now that the design is fully strung, you can take a look at it and think like, oh, I want it to be a little di different sizing. Anything can be slid. Anything can be moved if you want it to sit a little higher or lower. And now I'm feeling like this one could come down just a little more. This one could come up a little bit. But it's um, it's it's an intentional move. It's not going to happen unless you're actually kind of willing those to go, which is cool. So when you're wearing it, you can be confident that it's going to stay at the length that you'd like it to and how you strung it. And I kind of offset the roses from each other a little bit. So they show up a little different spot. And then I got some crystals here. They're also kind of offset from each other. But yeah, there it is in a nutshell. So all we have left to do is finish these ends. And I did a really simple finish on those. It's just basically a crimp, but um, we have we have to terminate more than one strand with the crimp. So that's the um, other, like just absolute gem of knowledge that I got from CB Revolution is how to do this kind of finish with a crimp. Um, I'm going to pull out two crimp beads. And on one side, I'm going to need a lobster claw. And on the other, I'm going to need a jump ring. So there's my jump ring. And I'm going to grab my tools really quick. So I'm going to close up this jump ring first so that I've got it ready. I love that the thoughtful inclusion of matching findings that just made my day. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. And here's one of those. So lobster claw, uh, jump ring, any size, whichever one you want, and two crimps. And I'm going to just do this two times so you get to see it twice, starting with the side. The first thing you'll want to do is bring the crimp onto both wires and then bring that down to the place where you'd like your crimp to sit. And I did give mine a little bit of air because um, you can actually, this is a great place for you to, you can be flexible with your length. Let me show you on the original one. So here's where it kind of ends. And then I, I gave it some, some length up here. And I did that because I wanted the beads to focus and then this part just behind your neck anyway. So that's um, something to think about when you're stringing it. So give yourself a little bit of room here. Let's give maybe two inches um, or so. And once we finish the side, we'll be able to match the other side to it when we finish it. So don't worry too much about the measurement. Just eyeball it if you want to. So there's the crimp. It's on both strands. And then bring on, for now, I'm going to bring on the lobster claw. When you bring on the lobster claw, bring it on just one strand. It's going through just one. And then the, the strand that you put the lobster claw on, for me, it's this one. Bring just that one back through your crimp. And then pull tight on that. 
and leave just enough room for your lobster claw to have um, motion for some air. So about that, about that much. And now I'm going to go ahead and crimp here. So what, what I've got, and I'll show this again on the other side, but what I've got is two strands going through and then one strand heading back through again. So a total of three passes are in that crimp. And I'm going to go ahead and take the crimping pliers. And if anyone's new to crimping pliers, they have teeth in the back that you use to form a U shape and then teeth in the front that you close the U together. And um, so a tip I took from Meredith Roddy is she actually, she closes the front first and then the back and then the front again. And um, that's just kind of a, a cool tip because it makes sure you've got a nice, nice round shape. The back, you can try both ways and see which one you like. Um, and there it is, all set. So now I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the, um, pliers and cut this crimp here. And then I'm going to cut the one back here. And there you go. So those are trimmed kind of like almost right next to the crimp, but not totally next to it. Wow. That was a really cool technique, Danielle, how you, you know, the second wire, the wire that you crimped together with the other wire that's coming through was essentially you crimp the same wire on itself? Yeah, mm -hmm. it kind of the same way, like when you're regular, you know, like when you're doing a regular crimp, like say sure. this was your bracelet, you would put the crimp on one and then you would string yeah. your binding and then you'd, yes. you would basically come back through it. It's the same thing, but with the added part of terminating another strand that's coming up through it. Uh-huh, very cool. And thank you to Sarah and Kristen for that awesome idea. Melody Capone says, Danielle, you just hit my inspiration button. Thank you for making this. That's so sweet. Oh, thank you. For thank sharing. you, Melody. I'm so glad. So glad to hear it. <laughs> that's a great comment. So that's a really great one. <laughs> Day made. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to slide this down to, let's see, right about there. So I'm looking at my length here, trying to copy it. And off camera, I'm pulling the pendant, just comparing my heights. It doesn't matter if my beads are moving around. I just want the lengths to be the same. And of course, it doesn't have to be exact. But as close as you want to get it, you can. So that's where I want my crimp to stay. So I'm going to pinch that spot. And then just pick a side, any side, and put your ring on that side. Come back through the crimp. I'm going to tighten that down. Again, I'm just trying to hold the position that I've got going. It's going to go ahead and crimp. Here's making the U-shape. And here's making the closing of the U-shape. Turn there. And being really careful not to cut the loop, right? So you want to just bring your pliers right in front. There we go. I'm always really careful with that step because it's terrifying. <laughs> but yeah, just cutting really close to the crimp there, but not quite. So you can kind of see it's it's just hidden there. And there's the necklace all set. So cute. And so that is the necklace. Would you like to see earrings? Do we have time for earrings? Yeah, we've got time. So here's the ones I made earlier. And I'm just going to change it up because I want to use the chain reaction. Okay. But they uh, same same exact steps that I've already got going for, um, for these was just three different lengths of, of chain. And then adding these little dangles to the end, um, which you can do or not do. It depends if you like them. So, because I was looking at this one over here that I had started. And I actually felt like it's pretty without putting an end on it. So oh, I was going to just so look at it and maybe just decide, kind of design on the fly and see. But that alone is gorgeous. I'm going to move this a little bit. 
and it brings out the shine here from this crystal. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. So you guys can try to choose whatever you want to do if you um, like it or not, if you wanted to put these on the end, but I'll show you how I made these because I feel like those are, those are kind of fun. And so you'll need craft wire. This is what Jen was just using. I've got to have it open a little bit of this and about four, I did about four inches, four or five inches or so. And then what you'll need is some round nose pliers. So starting, starting with my round nose, I'm just going to go ahead and make a loop. The loop's going to look like this. It's just a coil. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that now. Do you know what is really cool about that black craft wire and the roller beads is like it, they, it, it, that little coil almost looks like another roller bead that's like, I don't know, got a little skew to it. Oh, it does, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I like it. I think that's really like, it looks like, um, I don't know, like it looks like a spiral piece, like a, like a wily spiral, spirally piece of hair or something like that. Like a curly cue. Super cute. It does. I was experimenting with making it more like, you know how when people make the pumpkins, they kind of like pull. Yes. Yeah, I that do. That could be cute too. I made a couple like that and they were catching in my hair. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm just <laughs> But I love it. <laughs> I still love the look though. So it's just a choice. Like, which one do I like? I don't know. <laughs> it's worth it for fashion. <laughs> and all I'm doing here is I just kind of making a, make a coil. I put it on the end of the pliers and made it to my desired height and then just went ahead and bent the side upward. Danielle, I noticed that you used some flat nose pliers there that had a really skinny tip. Would you recommend using fl flat nose pliers or would you use a round nose? Oh, definitely round nose. Yeah, these are round nose. They just kind of look weird. Yeah, they're a strange one, They're but they're like, they are round. They're just kind of really tiny. Okay, I can see it um, now. Yeah, but um, regular round nose pliers is what I'd recommend because otherwise it um, one side it will make like a D shape kind of. Yes, okay. But of course that could look cool too. So you could try that too. I feel like that's why I love jewelry. There's just no rules. You can do anything that, that you want to try and then you'll come up with something beautiful. Absolutely. And I just kind of played with it to how it sits. They're all different. None of them are the same. They're all, they all have their own character. Here's one where I kind of like tried to pull them out a little bit. It reminds me of a uh, child of the eighties that I am. I don't know if anyone else can remember this, but there was this perfume by Debbie Gibson called electric youth. And it had a, like electric coil inside the perfume bottle. And I can't make this without thinking about that. <laughs> That's so awesome. I made my mom go get it for me. Like, I need that. <laughs> and she was like, I'm sorry, but fourth graders don't need perfume. I'm like, I need it. <laughs> so cool. So if this wire was pink, that's where I'd be definitely thinking about that. And so before I close this up, I want to think about where I'm putting it. So um, all I did here was I cut these links from the chain reaction. So let me grab one of those. And um, do you, I should, should I show that part too, making this? I think everyone's kind of seen it before, but. About the waterfall? Yeah. Um, sure. Let's, let's do the coil and show us that end piece first. Okay. And then, yeah, just show us where you cut the chain reaction so we can get a visual for that. Perfect. Yeah, I'll do that. And, and when I'm, oh, sorry, go ahead. D, just to answer your question, yes, that is just, that is a coil. It's not knotted. It's not a knot. Yeah, it's not. It's just a coil um, that I thought looked cool. And this this wire, when you make, when you work hard on it to do that kind of a twisting, it's strong. Like when I tried to pull it out to make the coil like kind of like dangle more, it took a little bit of strength even to do that. So this is very solid, I feel like. And all I'm going to do is just do a, a quick wrap. And I love the craft wire because it's very, it's very forgiving and it does um, make it easy for me to use my hands. I'm better with my hands than my tools. Coming in here. And 
And I'm just going to tap down a little extra point there. So I thought that was cute and it gives it a nice little accent. Actually, it's really growing on me with the silver next to the black like that. How cool is that? Super cool. Yeah, I love that. So where I, where I cut the chain reaction was I measured three different lengths that were kind of a cascade from each other. So let me open this one here. And so start, I kind of started with the bottom one. So showing the crystal all the way up. So what I did is I cut the jump ring just above that bar. So that's the third bar up from the crystal. And it's the bar itself that I slid onto the uh, chain onto the bottom part of my wrapped loop. So there's that one. And I'll probably use this wire to make a wrapped loop later. Put that on there. And then the next one, the length for that one, is just going to be one bar shorter. So I'm going to remove that one and that one. And just, I always get sad cutting the chain. <laughs> I don't like cutting it, but it's so pretty. And so that one is going to be the middle length one. And then last but not least, to make a short one. And for that one, I left the jump ring on it. And that's kind of an important part because I want it to have a little bit more sway. Um, so these jump rings, they open um, if you really want them to. So I'm going to show you how I did that. I started down here at the bottom. Here's my, and I only want the height of this and that jump ring. And the seam, you can actually see them. They're, they're soldered. The seam is just right there. But they pop open if you very delicately ask them to. Because the solder is, um, I mean, it is soldered, but it's not like soldered so much that you can't just kind of will it to come open. And then go ahead and close that up. And I'm going to use that one to make it dangle right on my wrap loop. The only reason I didn't have this one go directly from the bar like the other two is because when it's when I displayed it, it kind of needed that. It needed the extra room. Did my other one wander away? <laughs> Did they go? So there's my medium and there's my short one, but my tall one has wandered off. <laughs> it can't have gone far. It can't have gone far. You're right. Where did it go? I wonder if it's because it was attached to the chain there that it just didn't come free. I think it's this one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a new one really quick. Um, let's see. So there's that one. Um, yeah, so one, two, three bars. So I'm going to cut this one right here. The jump ring, not the, uh, not the crystal. Yeah, that's what I did. It's still attached to the long chain. I never actually took it off of the chain. <laughs> so there's one, two, and three. Those are the heights there. I'm going to bring this down just a smidge so you can see that a little better. Danielle, really appreciate you walking us through this also and explaining that, you know, the way that you have organized this, the first two you're going to be attaching through the bar, through the connector bar of the chain. But the last one, if you were going to just use the connector bar, it didn't really sit right. So you had to make an adjustment. And by using your eyes and by feeling out the design as you've been working with it, you were able to come to that conclusion. Exactly. Yeah. I just played with it and then kind of changed my mind about where I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, that's exactly where the idea came from. And so there's my, the bottom of it will be my wrap loop there. Mm -hmm. And I brought on the large one first. 
the long one. So again, this is through the bar here. And then here's the medium one. And I loved how this just fit, it fit perfectly on the 22 gauge. This was the perfect wire choice for this kit. And here's the short one and it's going through its jump ring. And there we go. Hey, so pretty. So they have all the sway you want them to have and they're flowy and, and it looks really pretty. And then you can just finish your wrap loop. And bring that around. I like to do three coils. I know everyone's got their own count that they like, but that one's three is what I always go for style thing. I'm going to trim this end. And my chain those pliers just to kind of flatten that down a little bit. Okay, and then my other boho bead. So pretty. And so I definitely am going to go back and add, add those to each one. The little coily endings. Yeah, it's very, it's really edgy with the little black coil on the end. I love it. I think it came out so nice. Mm, super cool. It kind of ties it together too. Yeah, I love it. I can't wait to see it all finished up. Yeah, definitely. Those are, I'm, just, I'm gonna sit and finish these like pretty much right now. I was gonna say, <laughs> I love them. And for everyone who's either making along at home or has the kit, or if you if you still want to get the kit, there's a link or Jesse James beads, you can get it. And also the supplies, the wire and all the fun doodads, the findings and whatnot are coming from Softlex. I cannot wait to see how everybody interprets this project on their own. So don't you forget to post your pictures. Oh yes, definitely. I need, need to see them. So that you said there's still kits available. Hmm. Yeah, we have just a few, just a few left at Jesse James beads here. I'll drop a link. And then also there's a few at Softlex too. And the cool thing about the Softlex kit is that Peridot wire um, is discontinued. So you can't get it anyplace else. Oh, really? Oh. And I then of that. course, Jesse James beads, everything that we design is um, his limited edition. Get it while it's, get it while you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we always have so much fun designing designing um, really cool products for our designers to dream up beautiful creations with and then watching all of our community make their own projects out of the beads and out of the designs that our teachers have taught us. Yeah, I appreciate that so much. It inspires and just keeps me going, keeps the new ideas flowing. Just the materials make it easy to stay creative and stay inspired. That is our absolute intent. So thank you for the assurance that we're doing our jobs here. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely true. Yeah, and so there's all of the all of the designs together. And the bracelet, I know I didn't cover that one, but it's um it's a really easy crimping design. I just did a regular one single strand crimp. Um, and then I put the um, just chain reaction on the loop. I just used a jump ring here. So there's a jump ring attaching the chain reaction to the top loop of the soft flex and then comes all the way down, attaches to the other side. And the center here has got uh, the boho bead and the cat. The cat does have a jump ring to make him hook on there. Super cute. Wow, look at this beautiful jewelry set. I love it. I think it's going to be so just festive. And I'm definitely wearing this for the whole month. I'm going to wear it on the 31st too. They hand out candy. <laughs> oh, yay. Will you dress up or do, you, or do you wear jewelry for your costume? Um, A little both. Like I'll try to incorporate it into my costume. Hmm, like maybe this is really cool. Just like as a witch costume. Yes. Like with some purple and a black and a hat. Yes. 
Absolutely. So what you make up and yeah. Oh my gosh. I like can totally see it. I'm yeah, just, like, I'm necklace right now. Do you know what else this necklace kind of reminds me of? Is yeah. the labyrinth with David Bowie. You know the movie? It does. Like, I don't know, something about it. <laughs> I'm gonna have dance magic dance in my head for the rest of the day. Dance magic dance. <laughs> oh, okay. oh my god. That is the coolest movie. That's one of those it ones we watched on repeat. Yeah. Can you try the necklace on first so we get to see it? Yeah. Yeah, the length is really good. I feel like it fits just the right length. For so for me, it hangs like right here. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, so it's a shirt too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great length. That's um so for for here, like the bottom of the pendant mm -hmm. is 17 inches from from where the clasp is. So that's the the length that ended up being from there to there. Oh wow. And you'll achieve that kind of naturally if you do all those steps by starting with just 35 inches. Um, both of those strands is 35 inches and you'll get to that length from starting there. Okay. 17 inches from, from top to bottom, but around. Yeah, from like here to the very bottom of the pendant. And the beaded part is probably closer to a little bit like 14 and a half because it's, it's a pretty big pendant and this gives it a real drop here. Yeah. Yeah. I love how it's like almost like a mandala style drop, the way that you use all four chords going through that yeah. little bottom beaded section. How neat. I think I was feeling a little inspiration from Mala's too. That is how exactly how you start your Mala. You bring those strands up and then you need two sides to knot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very cool. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Everyone in I the comments it. is just going gaga over it. Like uh, the feelings are mutual, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love it. So gorgeous. Well, this is, think, uh, go ahead. Okay. Yes. No, no, no. Do you tell me? <laughs> well, I think since I have two, I think um, I know, I know one of my friends or probably my mom's going to want this. <laughs> She's probably watching now like, Hey, that one's mine. <laughs> I know all of the friends and family of our jewelry designers are so lucky. Don't you guys think? Because, yeah. you know, you create <laughs> the jewelry prototype and that's what we use to, you know, let everybody know what's upcoming. And, you know, so there's not like, it's not a design on the fly, so to speak. And then, okay. then you actually have to make the piece on camera and then you don't have one, you have two. So then Maybe a friend or family member gets to reap the benefits of their kin being an amazing jewelry designer. Exactly. Yep. She, she keeps watching. She's like, yep, that one. She makes a list. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We should have a show sometime where all the moms come on, like Brittany Chavers' oh, mom would be cool. comments yesterday, and she posted a picture that her mom was wearing the jewelry piece that she made yesterday on the show. Her mom was wearing piece two. Oh, I saw her post. That was so cute. I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, my gosh. And my mom is Karen James. She's our co-owner of Jesse James Beads. It would, I don't know. It would be really nice to have, like, we were saying yesterday, bring your kid to, to bead class day. It would be really fun to have a bring your mom to work day, too. Yes, you have the number one recipient of all our jewelry creations from the beginning, right? So they know our they know our starting point. They still have like the first pieces we made, oh. everything like that. So yeah, yeah. Proud, proud mama moments. Have them bring those pieces. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Well, Danielle, this has just been such a treat. This entire this entire process, this entire event. I know that myself and Sarah Ayler were super excited to get you on board to do a, our very first experience with Jesse James and Softlex. We do these events a couple times a year and we have a lot of gratitude for the love and the design effort that you put out and just um, how amazing you make both of our brands look. So Danielle, from all of us at Softlex and at Jesse James, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We always have we always have a lot of fun when we get together, us designers and these really cool brands that are out there. Um, again, from Jesse James and Softlex, I want to thank all of the designers for coming out: Brittany Chavers, Sarah Ayler, Danielle Wicks, and Jem Hawks. It has been an incredible roundup of technique and and skill and mastery that we have gotten to experience yesterday and today. And it's just so wonderful for all of our fans that are watching online, whether you got the kit and are making along or you got the kit you're going to make later, or maybe you're going to get the kit and make at some other point. Um, it's really great for us to be able to come together as a community and enjoy these classes and just, you know, 
take a chance on, on inspiration. So thank you for everyone for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, um, Danielle, we will see you online somewhere next week. I know we're always so blessed to be able to catch it on the interwebs. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The I next. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like, think I've got classes next week. After I, I actually, I put a calendar for all my stuff on my website. Oh, yes. okay. And tell us, everyone who's watching, where can we find Danielle's classes and events on your website? It's uh, daniellewicksjewelry.com. And the very first thing you'll see at the top is calendar. You can click on calendar and it will show you all the stuff I have coming up. Awesome. Yeah. And then find the ones that you want to watch and save them in your own personal calendar. That's what I do. Whenever I see something that's coming up online and I don't want to miss it, write on in the phone for set a reminder. That's what I do too. It's a good, uh, yeah, good idea. Thanks for letting me share that too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the thing. Like what the share, sharing is, you know, it's the old adage that sharing is caring and it really is, is true. Yeah. Super generous. I appreciate it. You bet, Danielle. Well, we will see you somewhere around the bend. I yep. will be in touch soon, I'm sure. And <laughs> guys, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I hope that you enjoyed the trick-or-treat jewelry making party with Jesse James Beads and Softlex. Have a mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful start to your Halloween season. And we will see you sometime soon. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone.